Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Alright, pack one, pick one. Got a lot of goodies to choose from. Scarab God, definitely one of the more powerful cards that jumps out here. If we can build some sort of controlling deck that uh, has removal that destroys creatures and uh, they'll end up in the graveyard, can easily reanimate them with our Scarab God and this can pretty much be our only win condition. Other good cards, Shark Typhoon, always flexible and powerful. And yeah, those are kind of the, the two cards that speak to me the most. Yeah, we haven't really played much with Scarab God yet. So, let's try it out. Second pack. Ooh. There's a Blood for Bones. So we could try to go for a Reanimator deck if we take it early and get some of those expensive creatures to reanimate. So I don't mind that. Otherwise, Poison Cup would go well with our Scarab God. There's also Karn as just a good generic Planeswalker that we can play in any deck, so it doesn't commit us to any particular color. Um, I'm gonna try and see if we can make a Reanimator deck work and take the Blood for Bones. And then, you know, hope to wheel Poison the Cup, maybe Illumination. The one thing about Blood for Bones is that we do need some cheap creatures to sacrifice to make it work. So Wastrider is actually not a bad one, since we can potentially sacrifice the goat. Uh, Think Twice would also be fine, it's just a filler card draw effect. Palanca Predation would also be okay, since it doesn't exile, so we can still make the opponent discard a creature and then get it back with our Scarab God. I'll go with uh, Strider here, I think. No other big creatures to reanimate. Could also consider one of the green cards, like Balaget Recovery, as a nice land slash effect to get something back. Alrighty, what's next? Hmm, Patient Rebuilding is also an interesting one. It's both a win condition and a card draw engine. And it can also fill the opponent's graveyard for Scarab God. So this dual purpose. Acquisitions Expert would also be a fine cheap creature that we can then sacrifice to a Blood for Bones. There's a whole host of uh, interesting lands as well with Temple of Deceit. Hall of Oracles could be okay. And Commit Memory is always a fine serviceable card. I think I'm gonna still go for the rebuilding just because it's also kind of its own win condition, but I would love to wheel Acquisitions Expert or one of the lands. Couple good blue cards. Could always go for one of the powerful colorless lands, or maybe farmlands in case we want to splash white. This allows pretty good, it's nice and flexible, can even counter ultimates from Planeswalkers. Don't know if we're going to cast Restoration all that often. And keeping up mana so we can potentially activate Scarab God or cast a counter spell seems nice. <laughs> as much as I like Demonic Pact, I don't know how easy it's going to be to uh, make this work. Instead, we could just take Disdainful Stroke as a powerful counter spell or Doom Blade as a powerful spot removal spell. I think I want a Doom Blade just to go with our Scarab God to make sure we have ways of killing opposing creatures. Falmar Knight would also be decent as a cheap creature we can potentially sacrifice to Blood for Bones. Problem with Blood for Bones, of course, is that we also need some discard outlets to get expensive creatures in the graveyard in the first place, which might not be too easy to set up. All right, Timur calls it dead is one way to do it. So that seems decent. Gifted Aetherborn would also be fine. Good defensive two drop. And I guess Stormcaller could have some neat applications with 
cards like Doomblade. But uh, let's see if we can make this reanimator deck work out. And Silumgar's command seems fine. Plenty of powerful modes. So no reason to deviate from blue-black at the moment. This was our opening pack. Probably take a Glacial Fortress in case we want to splash. And we did wheel both Karn and Poison a Cup as well as Illumination, so that's promising. I think I'd take Poison a Cup again, get some more spot removal in the deck. Although the uh, two card draw options would also be quite decent. And then now will probably take the Think Twice over Palaka Predation. Although I don't mind the Predation either. Just could use some uh, two drops to fill out our curve. And Think Twice is also nice to keep up alongside our instant speed removal and counter spells. All right, Temple's great. Hall of Oracles could also be okay, although we don't have a ton of cheap creatures to put the counters onto. And both of the lands here are serviceable. Probably go with Arch here over Restoration. Inscription could be playable. All right, so not a bad start. Kind of blue-black, controlling, a bit mid-rangey, maybe has a reanimation angle to it. Hornet Queen is not a bad one to reanimate, although we wouldn't be able to hard cast it in any way. I'm a big fan of Into the Royal. There's some other good cards, Intervention, Hagra Mauling. I would consider two here. Yeah, this one's close. I think I'm going to go with Into the Royal, just because we could use more cheap interaction. And uh, it's both a 2-drop or a 4-drop if we need it to be. We're probably going to wheel something useful out of that pack between Intervention and Mauling. It's going to be tricky to cast Fraxin Obliterator. There is Godfarer's Gift, which is kind of its own reanimation card. Sky Sovereign might be difficult to crew. And then there's Body Double, which could also be nice in kind of a graveyard deck. But I'm sort of liking Godfather's Gifts. And then we just need to make sure we pick up a few additional creatures we can bring back. But yeah, this can just be a powerful engine by itself. Also makes zombies, so it has some synergy with Scarab God in a way. All right, a lot of powerful cards here, too. I uh, don't think Platinum Angel is necessarily a great reanimation target. I do like Alrun's Epiphany, just individually powerful. There's Brazen Borrower, gives us more interaction, as well as a creature to potentially bring back. Uh, Cruel Reality is a little slow. Could also be a Thassa's Oracle deck if we have some self-mill to win the game with. So definitely a lot of powerful options. I think I still go with Epiphany. But we'll probably wheel something here. Neutralize versus maybe a Tesseret. I'll go with the Neutralize. I'm a big fan of actual factual counterspell. Otherwise, Elspeth's Nightmare would have been decent too. Even a Disfigure I would take. Field of Ruin to maybe answer Field of the Dead. All right, so it's shaping up to be more of a blue-black control deck with Scarab God as a win condition. So we'll have to see here if we have enough creatures for Godfather's Gift to work out. This pack is also great. 
a lot of options. Baral seems excellent. We could take a Sanchmore Witch and make a few pests. Nimble Obstructionist would be fine too. I think it's Baral though. So many instants and sorceries we can discount. Ooh. Well, we have two great options. Unburial Rites for the reanimation theme, and we do have a Glacial Fortress for a bit of fixing, or Languish as our first sweeper, which is a pretty unique effect to have access to as well. I think it's still Languish, since I don't think we really got there on the reanimation plan, and I would need a bit more fixing for Unburial Rites to work out. But, uh, yeah. Both could be potential ways to go here. Castle's pretty nice. There's also Thirst, that's also a discard outlet for a potential reanimation plan. So this one's close. I don't think we're going to struggle to have enough playables to make our deck, so just improving the mana base seems better. Hagra mauling on the wheel. Also nice that we can play it as a land if needed. Don't think any of these matter. Alright, multiple choice seems fine. Surveyor could maybe help with fixing and enabling blood for bones. Probably not going to splash green for finality. Tazeret's like, okay, but not really exciting as a planeswalker. I'll take a surveyor just in case. And a field of rune could be useful too. Even though we do have patient rebuilding, we're not necessarily a mill deck. And rebuilding can win the game by itself, so it's not like we need additional mill cards. Like rune crab. Ooh. Well, there's Shieldred. That's one of the more powerful reanimation cards, although also just good to hardcast at 7 mana. So it's difficult to pass up. The other option would be either Murder Strider as a nice removal spell or Pathway. There's also Cold Steel Heart for a bit of ramp. So there's quite a few options here. Yeah, I think Shieldred is probably still my pick. Just powerful in general. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> Demonic Tutor. Yeah, not gonna pass this one up. So now we can assemble any two-card combos we might have in the deck. Can just get our Scarab God if we don't have it. Seems great. Search for Ascanta would also be a nice one. And, uh, yeah, I think we're at the point where the spells in our deck are good enough that we just want to improve the mana base a little bit. Baleful Mastery would be a decent option. The one interaction worth pointing out is that it exiles a creature, so we won't be able to bring it back with Scarab God, for instance. But, uh, yeah, Drowned Catacomb seems great. Uh, other good cards here, Guardian Idol, Omen of the Sea, would all be serviceable. And the Eldest Reborn seems fine. One of the better uncommons in Dominaria draft. Merfolk Looter is also interesting, would give us a discard outlet for the reanimation theme. So maybe next time we'll focus on that a little bit more. Although Eldest Reborn can also reanimate. Next up, I am a fan of Treasure Map. Just helps us build up more mana. Erebos' intervention is always fine. Bubble Snare if we need some cheap removal, although it doesn't put the creature in the graveyard. I think I like the treasure map. Sailor is also good alongside our counter spells, since we can just use the Sailor as a mana sink instead. 
Although we are trying to cast some expensive cards, so I don't mind a ramp from treasure map. Okay. Midnight clock can be a bit of a nombo if we have a full graveyard. With creatures we want to bring back. But it does ramp and prevents us from decking. Uh, Bontu. Bit of synergy with our Ghost Rider, but that's about it. Yeah, I'll take the Midnight Clock. A bit of ramp is still useful. Sphinx's Revelation could be a card worth splashing, although my only fixing is a Glacial Fortress and a Scattering Surveyor, and I think we have enough card draw that I'm not going to need it, but a Feathered Pool seems great. Next up, it's between Lay Claim and Inscription of Ruin, which would both be okay. Kind of liking the Lay Claim. Cosmos Elixir would also be okay. Do we have a lot of 4 drops? I guess we don't really. So maybe the life gain slash card draw is worth it here. And then go for Selundi Vision, which is just a nice line to have. Feed the Swarm, way to deal with powerful enchantments. There's quite a few of those in the cube. Callous Blood Mage, also actually not bad. As a creature we can potentially bring back with Scarab God. Maybe I do still like Blood Mage. Because I would like to have a few random creatures to potentially bring back. And then Augur probably doesn't have enough instants or sorceries. Hmm, I guess it's kind of close here. Maybe it's good enough, otherwise Omen of the Sea would be a shoe in Alright, we'll keep track of how often Augur of Bolas is going to miss. But uh, might not be that bad. Maybe we'll play a Merfolk Looter. And we wield Spectral Sailor and Bubble Snare. Alrighty. So no shortage of playables. So blue-black, probably more control than reanimator, if we're being honest. So I don't know if uh, Godfur's Gift is going to make it. But it did get a bit better with random creatures like Callous Blood Mage, Scattering Surveyor, which we could consider playing. We have Hagra Mauling and Silundi Vision as part of our mana base. Probably don't need Glacial Fortress. Pretty happy with Field of Ruin, just as a way to answer powerful lands. And then um, we picked up a nice couple dual lands as well. So, um, Sailor's definitely a maybe. Uh, multiple choice, could take it or leave it. Baral seems great. Looter's a maybe. These are all good. Midnight Clock's a maybe. I like the Blood Mage. Probably not going to play Timur Calls the Dead. Most Rider is also maybe now. Surveyor is still okay. Just helps us hit our land drops. Inscription, a bit slow, but versatile. Blood for Bones could still be worth it if we play like a Merfolk Looter package with cards like Shieldred to maybe discard. Maybe it's still worth it to play the, the looter with a few powerful curve toppers. But Shieldred we can also just cast for 7 mana and have it be powerful. So I'll put a maybe on the blood for bones. I do like rebuilding, Alice Reborn, Solumgar's Command, Scarab God. Multiple choice would be an extra card to find with Augur of Bolas as well. And then Epiphany, Shieldred. Gift, I guess, is a maybe. Yeah, I could just cut all of these. And then just plan to hard cast Shieldred. And then I probably need to cut a 5 drop. Okay. 
and I'm not sure which one that should be. So if I want to maximize Augur of Bolas, it would be Rebuilding or Eldest Reborn. All right, looks like people prefer Reborn, so we'll cut to Rebuilding. Surveyor is still useful just as a cheap creature that we can shumblock with, finds a land, so, you know, we don't lose any card advantage. And then we can reanimate it with our Scarab God later to make it a 4-4. So, you know, it's just a fine card, even if it's not doing anything busted. Same reason we also like the Blood Mage. Looks good. And then the mana base. 13 islands, 10 swamps here. Do need double black, but we also need double blue a fair amount. So... It's a pretty even split. And we also have a few colorless lanes. The arch might be a little greedy. So I could see cutting it for an extra basic. But uh, it's also another nice card draw engine to have in grindy games. Although we do already have castle. Yeah, the arch might be a little greedy. At least Field of Ruin turns into a basic land. And then... This looks good. Yeah, Demonic Tutor is going to be pretty sweet. So, like, what are the common scenarios for Tutor? We badly need the Languish to wipe the board. We want to get our Scarab Gods. We want to get Shieldred, maybe. All right, so we're on the draw. Might be a game where we demonic tutor for land, but I'll try it. Opponent playing Obosha's companion, so only odd mana costs. Turn two, we can foretell poison a cup. Cribbreaker sort of gives him a two mana play, despite having a Bosch as companion. Yeah, we'll just foretell here, I think. Cribbreaker is good against counter spells since they can just, you know, keep activating it, make, make more zombies. Although we can tutor for Languish at some point. Judith, okay. Probably gonna poison Judith. Ooh. Well, that makes me regret playing my Drowned Catacomb instead of my basic land. Close call between which counter spell to use. Alright, so I can tutor and still have poison available or into the royal. And then I'll probably get languish. Not sure yet which creature to bounce and or kill. Maybe we just kill Judith, prevent some damage. So Judith doesn't trigger when we languish. Could also bounce Judith or the token. If we bounce Judith, they might replay her. They might not. It's probably fine. And then, kind of like both here. Maybe I can just multiple choice without needing to wipe the board. 
Nah, all still languish. Don't want to languish my own 4-4 if they just tap out for a bush. Happy enough casting the multiple choice. And then we can maybe bounce it and counter it on the way back. Yeah, being at 4 life is rough. Hagar Mauling's fine. The Frostodon gets bounced before we make the token since this resolves from top to bottom. So we didn't take one from Frostodon at least. Ayara into Frostodon. Okay. So I probably don't want Epiphany while Ferocidon is still in play. So I guess we'll mauling Ferocidon. And then disallow a bush. And then now is a good turn to Epiphany. Okay. Can still play kicked into the royal. Probably want to bounce Ayara in response here, otherwise they can put me to one. For tells the card. Now, if they replay Ayara, we still lose one life. Ooh, Eldest Reborn's not bad. So I can play that attack with the team. This could be a Demon Bolt killing my 4 4. Yeah, I don't think it's likely for me to Eldest Reborn killing Ayara. And I just want to get the reanimation effect going as soon as possible. Leave myself the option to activate castle, I suppose. And then do we play around any haste creatures? Opponent is at 10. Let's say they do have removal for my 4-4. I attack with everyone, hit them for 4. It's still not a 2 turn clock. So I might as well keep one creature back, maybe a bird in case of a flying creature. If it's Glorybringer, I guess I would have to keep both birds back. Yeah, that might be worth it. Alright, so poison a cup for the 4-4. Four four. It's going to be kind of sketchy to activate castle since I'll, that leaves me at one life to the Ayara. Two 
to cancel or not to cancel. So next turn, opponent discards. Feels like I need the extra card. Removal for Yara would be good, counter spells would be good. Like if this game progresses, eventually we'll get back a creature. Which would be... Unclear which is even the pick here. I guess a Bosch. It's not even that exciting. Shieldred is exciting and so is Counterspell. Those were two excellent draws. Now the birds can attack. And we have a Counterspell backup. So it feels like we're in good shape. I will take action in case we discard a creature we can bring back with Shieldred. So your opponent had to win with uh, Pillar of Flame, but we had the Counterspell. And uh, how about a sweet Judith to end the game? Shieldred has Swamp Walk, so that's going to be lethal by itself. Well, this game couldn't have been closer. Yeah, I guess we learned that playing your basics first against a red deck in case of Ruin Blaster is not a bad idea. Although, to be fair, any counter spell would have done it with a Baral Discount, so we didn't necessarily need actual factual counter spell. Alright, we're on the draw. Decent hands. Opponent also blue black. It's got the ramp. Could bounce the mindstone that feels pretty weak. Keep up Disallow, probably fine casting Vision end of turn since we've got quite a few land drops already, including Castle. Although, you know, hitting your land drops in a control mirror is important, so might still be better than playing the Ysilun Division. I'll cast it. Well, I guess I'll take the Counterspell. Could tap out for Elixir. Since we do have Into the Royal to bounce whatever they might resolve, and if it's a creature we can maybe Doomblade it. I'm fine if Elixir gets countered. It's going to be difficult to protect Elixir in a counter battle, considering it's 4 mana. So that gets disallowed, sure. And then next turn I can play Blood Mage and still have Counterspell up. Experts. Can have my Doomblade. Probably not going to be great in this matchup. And we'll draw a card. And then we can even think twice if we don't need to counterspell. Yeah, that uh, works, I suppose. And has a disfigure. That's fine. We 
Ooh, so Tudor's eventually probably getting Scarab God. Don't need to get it now. Sadly, we don't get to keep up both counter spells here, but I can think twice and cast a Disallow. Sacking Mindstone, so opponent doesn't need the mana, just looking for action. So we just want to hit our land drops, eventually tutor for my guess is Scarab God. And then we can try and protect it with our counter spells if we haven't used them in the meantime. Surveyor, another nice value creature to play here. Wouldn't be able to keep a double counter spell, but that's fine. Now could be a good window to tutor. If they counter the tutor, then I don't necessarily want to be countering back. So maybe I wait until I also have disallow up. Can also into the royal my own scattering surveyor for value. Castle Lochthwain is a bit of a number with our counter spells since that's gonna start costing a lot of life. Doomblade my surveyor, so we could bounce surveyor with kicked into the royal, but then we're shields down on counter spells, so that's probably not acceptable. Could have cast an unkicked into the royal, I suppose, but that feels kind of weak. It's not like this acquisitions expert's gonna get there by itself. Elspeth's Nightmare. Can let that resolve and just bounce it with into the Royal End of Turn to cycle it. And a Midnight Clock. Hmm. Midnight Clock is kind of a long-term problem. Yeah, it's probably worth disallowing. We have some options. I can tutor for Scarab God, play it, although it does get answered by potential removal, although then we bring it back. So it's basically exile based removal that punishes me since I won't have Into the Royal up. I could bounce the Nightmare right now for four mana. Tutor and still have counter spell up. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Because I also don't want Nightmare to exile my graveyard, so it's kind of a must counter here. Even though that maybe leaves my Scarab God vulnerable. Solomagar's commands could also come in handy. Brawl, okay. So if I play Baral first, I can maybe protect Scarab God with Silumgar's command. That doesn't sound awful. And I can still foretell. Got a blocker for experts. Can even activate castle if I want to. So counter is a non-creature spell. 
Yeah, that probably resolves, and then we'll just uh, poison the cup. Or I guess I can draw and then poison it next turn. Just gonna cost me a bit more mana. Mauling's good too. So if I were to play Scarab God, I can activate it right away. Although I wouldn't be able to protect it with command. So instead, if I wait one more turn, play Mauling Tapped as a land, poison a cup on Gear Hulk. Next turn, I can play Scarab God with command backup. That feels like the play to me. I wouldn't be able to activate Castle if I poison though, unless I play the Swamp. So maybe I should poison first before deciding which land to play, because if there's an untapped land on top, I can maybe keep mauling and activate cancel. Hmm, those are both pretty good though. Maybe map is a little slow, but I'll keep the inscription. Yeah, I'll play it safe and make sure we can command alongside Scarab God. Maybe playing a little too conservatively, but I just don't want the opponent to have exile based removal in hand. And now we can counter a counter spell too. So I don't think I tap out to activate Scarab God, I'll just keep up command and then in my upkeep maybe activate Scarab God. If they just kill it with a regular removal spell we don't even have to fight over it. Thief is fine since we can kill it with the opponent's gear hulk. So I don't want to tap out here to castle or to Scarab God, just gonna keep up command. And once we get to untap with the god, it should be over pretty quickly. And do this in our upkeep so we have an extra zombie to scry and drain. That's a fine card, but again, keep up command. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Scarab God claims another victim here. We're on the play, fine hands. Okay, playing this tapped. Turn to we'll foretell. Could also play Augur. Hmm. You know, we could wait to play Augur until we scry with Poison the Cup, so we're guaranteed to hit a spell, more or less. Opponent's mono reds. Dragonkin Berserker is a card we eventually would like to kill, although we do have a Languish in hand. So maybe we'll be patient here. The one thing I don't want to see is like a Planeswalker that we cannot kill with removal. And then maybe we'll uh, poison plus Augur here. Yeah, for opponents not doing anything, I can hang on to my Languish. Alright, so if I keep both, then we'll draw the Temple and reveal Epiphany with Augur. That seems fine. Well, we would have hit regardless, but I think I still like Epiphany.
Next turn, multiple choice, a nice tempo play. Yeah, our deck's not great at handling Phoenix since we don't have many XL base removal spells. But for now we can bounce it. Well, that's not a bad one. Can potentially even reanimate the Phoenix while it's in the opponent's graveyard. So, I don't mind... okay. Sure. I don't mind trading my 4 4 for the Phoenix, because then we can finish off the 0 1 Elemental. Uh, and if not, I'll just play Scarab God and Temple, or I can Epiphany. Epiphany is going to be more impactful once we have a Scarab God in play, though. But step one, attack. Opponent takes it. Yeah, I'll just Scarab God, Temple, pass. Into the Royal seems fine, too. Alright, we've got a lot of tools now, so we should be able to figure out a uh, a nice line of play. So now Languish looks good. And I can bounce the egg with Into the Royal. Opponent's not exerting. Well, aren't they just dead to my Epiphany now? Seems like they're just dead to Epiphany. Although we would have been able to handle this game if they did exert between the Languish and the Into the Royal. Fine opening hands. One mana Demonic Tutor. Feels like cheating. Savior, so might be an aggressive deck, in which case we want to look for some removal. Not going to say no to Scarab God, though. Throne of the God Pharaoh, yeah. It's a nice way to increase their damage output without overextending. Augur Bolas, I, I suppose. And then next turn I can Baral plus Tutor. Alright, Augur of Bolas hasn't failed us yet. Could even Baral plus one mana into the Royal. And neutralize. So many options. Baral plus Bounce the War Singer isn't bad. The only problem with that line of play is that we're kind of going all in on playing creatures, so then Tutor for Languish might not be as effective. The Vigilance is a bit of a number with the Throne, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could just tutor for Languish and then cast a Languish next turn. And then Scarab God can take over. And Languish even gets around Savior. Just play a tap land. All right. So hopefully they play more creatures that die to languish. And then... I could even consider chum blocking the War Singer, although that would be giving away the fact that we're planning to wipe the board a little bit. So if I instantly block our opponent knows what's incoming, 
three life, you know, is worth quite a bit against an aggressive deck, but we're at 18, so I can probably afford to take three just to kind of sell the idea that we're not going to necessarily cast a sweeper. Alright, perfect. Now I've got a nice full graveyard for Scarab God. I might even wait on Scarab God until I can keep Counterspell back up, and then for now play Baral, plus I can play Kicked into the Royal. That's fine. And then I probably still take three and then end of turn bounce it. Yeah, I can respond to the trigger. Because I don't want them replaying my case right away. Conclave Tribunal. Right, now I probably just bounce my chaos and let the tribunal resolve. Tribunal would have been a great answer to Scarab God too, so glad that's out of the way. All right, so we have a few options. We can go Blood Mage, keep up neutralize. Which isn't bad here, because then next turn we can resolve Shieldreds. Or I can tap out for Scarab God. Yeah, let's double spell here. And then make a Pest or draw a card. We're still at 11. Ah, Silmgar's Command could be useful too. And I'm happy enough countering Mikus. Just don't want to get burnt out by the throne. Yeah, I'll keep the Blood Mage back still. If the answer shield it, they could maybe attack with Mikaeus. And then we even have some creatures to get back here with Augur. Alright, Obosh. Throne luckily is 2 mana. And also causes life loss and not damage. Doomblade, nice. Alright, so feels like we're taking over now. 8 mana. Second so Doomblade Micaeus. And kind of just chill. Or we could play Scarab God. Do want to close out the game relatively quickly. Could also kill the token so that we kill a Bosch with Shieldra's ability. Just clear the entire board. That seems good too. And then I can bounce Throne. So target a permanence. That's the Throne. Mm, 
don't want to attack because there would be a trade. Alright, so now our opponents got nothing. Sky Sovereign, okay. Can get back my Blood Mage now. And I'll make a Pests since we are at 7. Inscription only bounces creatures and not any permanent. Yeah, I mean, Sky Sovereign can almost kill us. If they find a cheap 3-powered creature and play Throne, I could be dead next turn. So how can I potentially stop it? Scarab God doesn't let me activate. Um, I could just try to draw two and look for a counter spell. It's probably my best bet. Multiple choice only bounces creatures. So that doesn't quite do it. Alright, this allow should pretty much seal the deal here. Throne is fine. Scarab God with two counter spells back up. Alright, and there we go. Sweet. Alright, not bad. Nice clean 7 0. Takeaways Scarab God's pretty busted. Shieldred's amazing. And cheap counter spells and removal's good. I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.